the general concept. You with me? So the problems will change, the scenarios will change, but to do this structure, you're going to use this, yeah. So you got experimental units, random design, you got group one, group two, treatment one, treatment two, then you compare your results, okay? So um, six free response questions on the AP stat test, right? Yes. One of those will be, one of those <laughs> will be to design an experiment, okay? There's very few predictable things on the AP stat test, very few, but one thing that is for sure for the last 20 years, there will be, there probably will be question two or three, will be to design an experiment. So the question that you're going to do in a couple minutes is like a free response question, okay? Um, so just keep that in mind that this is kind of what it would look like, and this is putting a lot of different concepts together. So as you watch the video, take a peek at this slide here and see how it's broken apart into specifics rather than generalities. And then after the video, do number 65. Describing a completely randomized controlled experiment. Suppose a utility company decides to conduct an experiment to compare two approaches to encourage energy conservation with a group of customers who receive information about that energy consumption but don't get any help in monitoring electricity use. They'd like to know whether or not utilizing a digital electricity display uh, will help conserve energy. So for this problem, we need to describe a completely randomized des design involving 60 single-family residences in the same city whose owners are willing to participate in the experiment. We'll write a few sentences describing how we'd implement the design. Now, for this, what we need to do is randomly assign 20 houses to each of three different treatments. One treatment will be the digital display, one treatment will be using a chart plus that information they receive, and one will be information only. Our response variable is going to be the total amount of electricity used in a year. So we'll start by labeling each house with a distinct number from 1 to 60. Then, using, uh, writing the labels on 60 identical slips of paper, we can put them in a hat, mix them well, and then draw out 20 slips. The corresponding homes with those numbers will be given digital displays showing the current electricity use. That's our first treatment group. For the second treatment group, we'll draw 20 additional slips. Those homes will use a chart. And for the third treatment group, uh, the remaining 20 homes will be given information about their energy consumption, but they'll have no way to monitor their usage. Now at the end of the year, we'll compare how much electricity was used by the homes in the three groups. Energy consumption, but they'll have no way to monitor their usage. What's the overall question? What's the whole purpose of this experiment? What other methods? Digital display, display information and chart. chart. Okay. So does the knowledge of energy consumption affect what? Your energy consumption. Energy consumption. Is seeing a meter digital or analog or whatever, or not knowing anything at all, is that going to affect if it does, then it would be maybe in the in the company's best interest if they're trying to reduce energy. If it doesn't matter, I don't know about you, my home is 50 years old, and it hasn't really updated the little meters in a long time. There's nothing digital about it. If the digital display would actually help lower energy, it would be worth their while. Conversely, if it doesn't, why would they invest the time to come out to have a guy come in and install and all that business? You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you can see the practical use of these experiments. If the display doesn't matter, if the people are going to conserve energy or be careful anyway without a display, don't do it. Okay? So there's real practical uses for this. Now at the end of the year, we'll compare how much electricity was used by the homes in the three groups. Now this is a complete description of a completely randomized design. Notice we have a chart and we have a verbal description. If you encounter a problem like this on the AP exam, you won't get full credit if you only provide a description of a completely randomized design. Notice we have a chart and we have a verbal description. If you encounter... If... When... Oh. Oh. Sorry. Oh. If a problem like this on the AP exam, you won't get full credit if you only provide the chart. So you want to make sure you provide some verbal description as well. 
Now for some additional practice with completely randomized controlled experiments, try exercise 65. So a diagram alone is not sufficient. Okay, a diagram alone is not sufficient. Hi. What if we give the verbal and not a diagram? Uh, that's fine. Or uh, so as long as we have the verbal in there. Right, but I don't know about you. I first start with a diagram and then I unpack it in writing. I can see it in my mind how it needs to be splintered to create little. I I build it first and then I write about it. So that that if you're able to just kind of see it in your mind and start writing it. Bless you, but I, I'm not able to do that. All right, so try 65. Experiments, what could go wrong? So let's go back to the overall question of does amoxicillin help sinus infections? Suppose we have nurses that are giving, or doctors giving this medicine to the subjects, okay? Suppose we have some immature nurses or doctors, and they know that they're giving away placebos. Like, here, take this. Like that, right? They're kind of like laughing and they're like, it's real. <laughs> or what about after when they're when they're taking the uh, apparently there's a sinus rating score. Suppose you're getting data back from that, and they took a placebo. They're like, man, I feel great. They're like, really? So if the people that are doing the experiment also know who gets the placebo, it could affect. Stuff. You get what I'm saying? So number one, there's something called a dummy treatment called a placebo effect. A double-blind experiment is where the doctor and the nurse, or the nurse, would also not know who's getting the placebo. You follow me? Okay. If you don't iron this out before you do the experiment, it's too late. You with me? So that's what I said at the beginning of the period, that 99% of this is planning. And suppose you've already done this with uh, 100 people, and you've already given the medication, and you have doctors and nurses collecting data or interacting with the patients differently because they know these people just feel fantastic, and yet they took a placebo. Okay? That would affect the results. Okay? So the fact of a double-blind experiment, you would want to plan that ahead of time, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. That's a logistical thing that would have to be done beforehand. That's the planning that goes on before the experiment. That way you're not changing things in the middle of it. Okay? It would really nullify the experiment if things like this happen. Okay? So, double-blind experiment. Uh, let's see where we at. 